So a couple of weeks ago, Matt Rule was named the Panthers head coach. It's a move that I think pretty much everyone really loves. You know, I mean, everywhere he's gone in college, he's had success. He turned Baylor completely around. And so moving him to the NFL, you never know when it comes to a head coach. There, there's been so many examples of guys that we thought were going to be great, not work out, and guys we thought were going to be terrible, work out. So you, you never know. But this seems like it's as close to a sure thing as you can get without actually hiring like an NFL head coach who recently has been a good head coach. So I want to talk about some of the things that I like about Matt Rule and some of the things that I like that he's done. I think that it's very interesting to just talk about the whole Baylor team, you know, just as a whole, because it's kind of difficult to really talk about what is the head coach doing, because you just you never know what their decisions are. But what you can do is talk about the coaching as a whole. But there are certain things that I like about just the coaching that I've, I saw, like on this play, for example, it's going to be a three man rush, which listen. You guys know how I feel about the three-man rush. I think it has very limited situations where it makes sense. It's not what I would have done here, but I'm still going to show this play as a good example because watch what's going to happen. So it's, you know, cover three with a three-man rush. So there's eight guys in coverage. And then for Oklahoma, they have a receiver running that route right there. And for a second, it looks like he's going to get open. I mean, as you see, he cuts about three yards down the field or so. So he's, you know, two yards away from the first down. And it looks like he has space right here. And the reason why it looks like he has space is because another Oklahoma player was in the area. So he took away the Baylor player who was in charge of covering that zone. So now there is an opening. But if you look at the defensive back right over there who was in charge of covering the bottom right third of the screen. Now he's seeing what's going on and he's going to run over and try to make a play. And he's going to successfully run over, make this quick stop and hold them just a yard short. So to me, that's good coaching of when your players are aware a, the players have to get credit, but also B, you know, the coach has to give credit. I think the coaching staff has to give credit because they taught their players how to be aware and how to look up and things of that nature. Now, will that matter as much in the NFL than it did in college? Probably not, but it should still matter to some degree. So I do think it's worth pointing out. That being said, there were other examples of the opposite thing happening. Like on this one, same type of coverage, but what's really interesting here is if you look at the three-man rush, so one thing you have to do on a three-man rush is you have to make sure you don't give up containment. It's just very important to not give up containment because that can really allow quarterbacks to have 10 seconds to make a throw. It's an important thing to make sure you don't do. But after the ball is snapped, the player who is furthest to the bottom half of the screen, he didn't do a great job of making sure he stays on the edge right there. And it's going to be even worse because a halfback is going to come over to that side to kind of push him over in that direction as well. So this is not a great situation for Baylor. I mean, watch. Hurts is just easily able to scroll down to the bottom portion of the screen, and he has all day to make a deep throw. And it's just a play that you would like to not see happen. So there are some good. I think as a whole, there is a lot more good than bad, but that that does have to be mentioned, in my opinion. And those things might seem like they they should just be, you know, player things. Not necessarily those are something you credit a coach to. I totally disagree. I think you look like the Pittsburgh Steelers. All of their guys always seemingly don't make those mental mistakes. And then you look at some some bad teams like the Cleveland Browns. I mean, how many mental mistakes did they make over the course of a season? To me, it does fall on coaching more than anything. I think that's one of the key ways you can actually tell if there's good coaching. And I think for the most part, Rule showed good coaching in that situation. His players were more intelligent than his opponents more often than not. There are some other things that I love about Matt Rule. I think that him... It, Coming through the Carolina Panthers could be a great fit. I think the fact that he prioritizes the running game, he likes to run a lot of inside zones, is not afraid to run some RPOs. I think that that would pair with a guy like Christian McCaffrey, debatably the best player in football, regardless of position. I think having an offense built around him, that just makes sense to me. I mean, again, you know, you kind of build your system around the players sometimes, not the players around the system, or you can kind of do a little bit of both sometimes as well. But when Matt Rule already has a system that he likes, and it would make sense to fit that system around the personnel that Carolina has, I think that's probably one of the reasons that he decided to go to Carolina is McCaffrey. I think that that probably factored in. And of course, the paycheck definitely helped, which also on a bit of a tangent, I love paying coaches big money. I think it just makes so much sense. I mean, if you're willing to pay a, a mediocre receiver $12 million a year, why wouldn't you be willing to pay a head coach of that. Obviously, a head coach is way more important than someone you hope will be a number two receiver. So to me, it just makes a ton of sense and it doesn't count against the cap. So why not? If you're a 
if you're a GM. I mean, it just makes sense. Or an owner, obviously, depending on who's the one making the decision. Usually the owners, actually. So, But for an owner, I think it makes sense. It builds your brand. But that's just my opinion. But there's one more thing I have to talk about with Matt Rule, and it's his aggressiveness. This is my favorite thing about Matt Rule. This is what sets him apart from a lot of guys, a lot of the coaching candidates, is he is not afraid to be aggressive, like on this play. So it's third down and 11. They're at the 40, so maybe you could try to gain like six, seven yards, which Oklahoma would probably give you, kick a long field goal, which, you know, maybe might not go in, but at the same time, you only have 30 seconds left in the half anyways, so wouldn't be the end of the world if you missed it. But Rule is saying, hey, this is college. We can't trust kickers. I'm going to do something a little bit different. As you see on the screen, it's a cover one blitz that Oklahoma is going to run. And for Baylor, they're going to say, okay, we're going to have a receiver on the edge. We're on a go route. And even though there's so much space in between the defensive back and that receiver, they're still going to take a chance here. And look at this. I mean, it wasn't even particularly a greatly thrown ball at all, actually. But they trust the receiver, and he's able to run back make the catch, and that was a huge play in that game. Again, you could say, well, I mean, it was mostly just the receiver making a good play. You could even go as far to say that the defensive backs on Oklahoma didn't make a great play. But either way, it's Matt Rule saying, I'm going to take a chance here. I'm going to try to win this game, not just try to, you know, make sure I don't lose it. However, one of my favorite play calls I saw all year in college was this one. This one was just an awesome play call in the moment. So, you're in a situation right now where you need to get 95 yards. You're currently down three, so I guess you don't need 95 yards, but 95 yards to take the lead or just about, you know, what, 70, 65 yards to get in field goal range. And so they're going to try to make sure they can do something very unique on this very first play. You see that right there where the number two receiver is going to step up a little bit to the top half of the screen just to be ready for a catch. And then what you would expect is that, okay, if he's running this as though he's going to be running a screen, the two other receivers are run out the block. This makes a lot of sense in this situation. Try to gain some yards. It's first down and 15. You do have, you know, over five and a half minutes left, and you only need three, so you have time. This is something that, for Oklahoma, they would totally be expecting a screen. But, of course, it wouldn't be one of my favorite play calls if it was a screen. Instead, the number three receiver is going to cut around like that, and he's actually going to try to run, and that's going to be the number one target on this play. And so after the ball is snapped, you look at the receiver who is out as though he was going to run a screen. He's jumping up. He's saying, hey, I'm right here. Make, you know, throw the ball in my direction, which is forcing several Oklahoma players in. So instead, he can just throw this ball deep, and they're able to nearly get a touchdown just like that. It ends up getting all the way to the 15-yard line. Granted, Baylor did not win this game, but I thought that, that it was a really well-coached game by Matt Rule. And I do think that Rule is going to bring some some really good things to the table for Carolina. I really do. I'm not going to lie. As a Bucks fan, I am not happy about this signing. I wish they, I wish they signed Jason Garrett, you know, and it's, or someone like that. Uh, pretty pretty uh, terrible from, from my perspective, but pretty great for Carolina fans' perspective. I think he's a great coach. I think, I mean... Just look at his success everywhere he's gone. He's never been in a place that, I mean, every time he goes to some place, they have success there, and there's a reason for it. I mean, the guy knows how to be a head coach. He knows how to build a culture, too, which is something you can't really break down by watching the tape, but you absolutely can just sort of tell by how the team acts, how the team performs. And, of course, there's always that thing where it's like you never know what happens when you go out and hire a head coach. You, It's always the total wild card. You never know, but at least with him, you know he can be a head coach in college. You know that he has a scheme that will fit your offense. You know that he's not afraid to be aggressive, which in today's NFL, you, you have to be more and more aggressive. He will go for it on fourth downs. He will take chances down the field. I mean, we still don't even know who Carolina's quarterback is going to be. So, you know, we definitely don't know how good they're going to be just yet. But in terms of the coaching, I love this move from them. I think it makes a ton of sense, uh, but that's just my opinion. I like to know what you guys think. What do you think of this this coaching decision? I always enjoy hearing from you guys, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.